If you want to trade like a rebel, you got to come to RebelCon 2022. It's going to be in Dallas, Texas at the fabulous Four Seasons Resort. It will be more fun and more live trading than we've ever done before. That's why it's called RebelCon 2022. We're going to have barbecues and double the amount of live trading. The guest speakers, as soon as we announce those, this thing's gonna be sold out, limited to 250 people. Sign up now for RebelCon 2022 at the Four Seasons in Dallas, Texas. Welcome to the Rebellion. Good morning. I'm Pete Jerry, and this is the take on this Wednesday. Yes, it's hump day. We're already in the middle of the week and we are flying by. But I will say this, you go back to Friday, rough day in the markets down a thousand points. Monday, another rough day. Tuesday, yesterday, <laughs> another rough day. The Dow started off the day in positive territory, but that didn't last very long. And as a matter of fact, we started to see a little bit more volatility come into the game, as well as the what we were seeing in the NASDAQ. But Dow down over 1% yesterday, down a little over 300 points. Then you look over at the NASDAQ, it's underneath 12,000. That was down definitely more than 1% yesterday as well, down about 134 points. So it just gives you, as a matter of fact, it was virtually on the lows of the day in the last couple of minutes, had a little bit of a pop for the NASDAQ to get off of the lows. But let's, you know what, we're, we're, we're going to still call it near the lows, at least that, because it certainly was. 38 million contracts trading yesterday, about getting closer to about average of that nearly 40 million per day that we've been seeing in August, which quite honestly, that's a very, very strong number for August. That's not something we normally would see in normal situations. But uh, things are not necessarily normal right now. And people are definitely paying a lot of attention to the markets particularly what's going on with the treasuries, the Fed, and all of the rest of that. So certainly there is a lot of differences going on. We've got the volatility index itself. It actually closed well above 26. He had the volatility index of the NASDAQ, the VXN, right around 32. Gives you some sort of a, a feel for the kind of markets that we jumped right back into. And we made this move in a very, very rapid pace just over a couple of the last couple of sessions. The two-year continues to climb a little bit higher. The 10-year continues to climb just a little bit higher each and every day. But then we look over at crude. And crude being down yesterday, that was something, down about 5% or so, back down towards about 92, let's call it. Nat gas down about 3%, kind of holding on close to nine, we'll call it. Bitcoin, was underneath 20,000, but just below 20,000. Gives you a little bit of that macro picture there. Every single sector yesterday closed in the red. Normally, we would see something kind of jump up. Maybe in a market like yesterday, it would be the staples. Nothing finished in, in the green. Everything did finish in the red. As a matter of fact, many of them over about a 1% drop. Energy was down well over 3% yesterday. It was a lot of those beta names. We talk about it all the time, but that's that's part of the, the momentum that we are seeing. It was APA, it was Devon, it was EOG, Marathon, Pioneer, Oxy, all of them getting hit to the downside yesterday. You also had those materials. And the materials, take a look at, at something like uh, AA, as a matter of fact, down about 8%. Then you got Freeport, then you've got Nucor, then you've got Cliffs, then you've got US Steel, all getting hit to the downside, nearly a 2% drop for the material space. Industrials a little bit better, but not a whole lot down about one and a half percent yesterday with Dow and 3M and Caterpillar. Then you look over at the financials, also down, not nearly as bad. Matter of fact, financials of the the the, the major indices uh, uh, sectors rather that we talk about, financials actually had one of the better days, down less than a half a percent, but they were definitely in in the red. We had Morgan Stanley, you had City, you had Jefferies just continuing to kind of plot along to the downside of late. We'll see if that continues as well. And of course, technology down about 1%. You got Apple, you got Tesla, you got Meta, you got Netflix, all getting hit pretty good. We did have some positives out there though. Best Buy was one of those, uh, obviously with earnings. And then you look over at some of those, you know, you look at the retailers, you look at something like a Target or a Tapestry or a, a Ralph Lauren, all in positive territory yesterday, Workday as well. Uh, but we
We also look over more negatives, something like a CF. We talked about that time and time again. Mosaic and CF had that great run to the upside. They've been hit, getting hit over the last couple of sessions for sure. Matter of fact, C, uh, CF Industries yesterday down about 6%. Freeport was hit pretty good. We talked about some of those beta energies that I'll throw in like a Baker Hughes and a Valero also down pretty significantly yesterday along with Baidu and Lucid. You get the idea. It was a very much of a selling kind of a market yesterday. So we start off today again in positive territory. Things look okay. Dow up about 100, the NASDAQ up about 100. The NASDAQ's been able to hold on to a, most of its gains. Last I looked, the NASDAQ was up 50 or 60 points to the upside, still in the green. On the, on the flip side of that, you look over at the Dow and suddenly you go from up 100, down 50, back up 100, and then we start to drift back around and then we find ourselves in negative territory once again, down, call it 50 points right before we came on here. Crude hit again, back down towards that 90 and a half area. Nat gas underneath nine, around 890. We'll see if that mojo pushing to the downside continues as well. Volatility, we're looking at the VIX right around 25. We're looking at the VXN, still hanging around 32, holding up above that 30 level after finally getting that dip underneath. But here we find ourselves back in that 32 range. Seems like that's where it wants to be once again. Bitcoin did get a little bit of a boost over that 20,000 level, 20,300 last I looked. The 10-year, the two-year, not a whole lot of movement. Just seems to be just kind of that edging a little bit higher each and every day and making people a little bit nervous every single day. Snap, that was one that was pretty interesting. Their growth rate slowing faster than anticipated. Now they were looking for the growth to be pretty decent. It was still in positive territory, but not quite what everybody was looking for. But nonetheless, the interpretation, at least early is, it's off of the 52 week lows and it is now in positive territory in a pretty decent way, actually. So the read through of those earnings, giving people maybe a little bit of encouragement, the more the depth that they got into reading about uh, what all was included there. Now for the sectors themselves, Energy started off almost 1.5% or a little more than 1.5% to the downside. That's recovered down about 1%. Materials started to melt down a little bit more than they were. We also saw some slipping in the communications sector. That started off very, very strong. It slipped back. It was still up over 1%. But we look at healthcare. That slipped. We look at technology. That was slipping. We look at the financials. That was slipping. That was the pull primarily that we were seeing both on the S&P and on the Dow itself. But as I mentioned, you take a look over at the technology uh, specific and you look at the NASDAQ, still holding on pretty good. So what are some of the names that are really holding up really well today? Meta, Snap, Netflix, all very, very uh, much buoying the markets to some degree. You've got also some of those in that casino world. Look at Caesars, look at Las Vegas Sands in positive territory today. Chinese names, once again, showing a little bit of something to the upside. And we're going to, that's is not the first time I'm going to hit on that today, but we look at those Chinese names, PDD, Baidu, NetEase, JD, you get the idea, all very strong today, holding up pretty nicely. Mosaic, we were talking about CF industry, Industries, Mosaic under a little bit of pressure. Seagate under some pressure. HP Inc. under a little bit of pressure after some of the deliveries that they gave. Chevron, of course, and we're going to see that in, in, in some pressure when we talk about what's going on with energy. Also, another one that just getting hammered, Chewy. We talk about the pets all the time. Chewy down about 11% today. That did not look so good. They had to cut their full year outlook. That definitely influencing the direction of that stock today. I've got two unusuals for you, and they're going to be really interesting. Yesterday, if you had the chance and you listened to what Ryan and Wayne and myself were talking about yesterday with the unusual options and how do you actually navigate through things, and we talked about, well, we'd certainly seen a lot of bearish paper in this particular entity and that particular sector and, and that particular ETF, and we were seeing a lot of that. Well, today, a little bit of a change. Now, we talk about some of these Chinese names in positive territory. How about this one, K-Web? It's the Chinese Internet ETF. Now, BABA being a big portion of that towards the top in terms of percentage, but trading right around 30, we got a buyer of 60,000, 60, 60,000 60, of the September 35s. That's regular expiring options. September 35s, only about 11 cents up to about 17 cents. 
one print was for 45,000 of those 60,000 options. Gives you a little of, a bit of an idea that something we talked about last night on the webinar as well. What do you look for? You look for size. You don't look for the retail size, 10s and 20s. We're looking for the massive size and 45,000, even at a 10 or 15 cent option. <coughs> That is a pretty big shot. Next, we've got Walgreens Boots. That's another one, trading a little bit over 35 and a half. 10,000 of Fridays expiring. We're at Wednesday already, folks. Fridays expiring, 36 and a half calls. Doesn't have to make a huge move to get there, but for Walgreens Boots, that's another dollar to the upside from where it is right now. Those options were eight cents up to about 14 cents. Gives you a little bit of an idea. There is some positive out there, despite the fact that we're seeing that pushback that we've seen over the last three or four sessions and even a little bit today with the Dow. But we're looking over at what's going on right now with the NASDAQ in positive territory. Can that continue? Will we get a bounce out of the other side of the, uh, with the Dow and pull along with that, of course, the S&P. That's something that's ready and we'll see if that plays out. But certainly seeing today, every single unusual option as we were looking at it, and I was told this by my man, John, right before we came on here, the producer, every single one was a buyer of calls. And that says us something a little bit when you're looking at markets that have a little bit of pressure, a little bit of volatility and what people are looking for. A lot of buy account calling of buys early on. Folks of buying of calls, excuse me, early on. Folks have a great day of trading. We'll see you tomorrow.